Well, good afternoon, brothers and sisters, and welcome to today's lesson. We're continuing our journey through the Ten Commandments as we find them expanded and explained to us in the Heidelberg Catechism. And a few weeks ago, Pastor Winston taught on the Seventh Commandment, and there he focused on the relationship between husbands and wives. And that brings us now to the Eighth Commandment. And you probably recall that the Eighth Commandment is, You shall not steal. We all know what stealing is. It's taking something that doesn't rightfully belong to you. And the scriptures expand this commandment to include a whole host of different forms of stealing. And so our catechism, it also speaks about numerous different forms of stealing as well. Because stealing is not just robbing someone at gunpoint or breaking into someone's car or shoplifting. There's also things like failing to pay employees a fair wage or failing to work as hard for our employers as we should. And there's using questionable business practices so we can squeeze a bit more profit out of our customers. And all of these things are different forms of stealing. And one of the underlying reasons people steal, perhaps not the only reason, but one of the reasons people steal is greed. And that's mentioned towards the end of question and answer 110. And so for this Lord's Day, we're going to take a closer look at, at greed, which is one of the roots of theft. And our, our theme that we'll be using to look at this, this uh, Lord's Day, this commandment this afternoon, is the Eighth Commandment, Loving God More Than Stuff. And next week, we'll look at question and answer 111 and look at how we are to love people more than stuff. So if you have a book of praise with you, please turn to Lord's Day 42, and we'll read question and answer 110 together. And there we confess, what does God forbid in the Eighth Commandment? God forbids not only outright theft and robbery, but also such wicked schemes and devices as false weights and measures, deceptive merchandising, counterfeit money, and usury. We must not defraud our neighbor in any way, whether by force or by show of right. In addition, God forbids all greed and all abuse or squandering of his gifts. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love and grace. Thank you for the way that you have taught us to live to live lives of thankfulness before you. We pray, Father, that you would work in our hearts now as we study this commandment, that you would encourage us, and that you would equip us also through the proclamation of your word, that we would be able to live lives that do not hold on to the, the material possessions of this world, but that we live lives that glorify you and that treasure the relationship that we can have with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And when Jesus said this, he was speaking to his disciples and, and crowds that had followed him from all around Galilee and Judea. And there would have been farmers and businessmen and, and tax collectors listening to him. And these people, they knew what it meant to gather in their crops only for them to go bad and rot or, or to collect wealth only to have it stolen from them. And there were people like tax collectors who were essentially considered thieves because of how they extorted people. And Jesus warns them and he warns us not to fall in love with the stuff of this world. He warns us not to build up our treasures here on earth. And he went on to say that no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. 
And the word translated as money in, in the ESV is mammon. And mammon is whatever someone relies upon. It, it could be money or property, possessions, basically wealth of, of any kind. So Jesus warns that chasing after the stuff of this world will lead you away from God. He warns that your love of God will be replaced by your love of stuff. And in Luke 12, we're given a picture of this. There we're told of a man who came to Jesus and asked Jesus to make his brother share the inheritance with him. He was so greedy and in love with the treasures of this world that he used what was probably his only opportunity to speak with Jesus to, to make himself wealthier. And Jesus, he used that opportunity to teach the crowds a parable about the love of money. He said the ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. And so the man thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. And then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. And both men in Luke 12 were corrupted by wealth. Greed led them to focus on themselves and ignore God and everyone else. And their wealth and, and greed, it became a curse. And that is so often the case. You can think of Jesus saying it's easier for a camel to walk through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And if the love of stuff could interfere with someone's love for God in first century Judea, then that's certainly true today as well. We live in an age of, of consumerism and materialism with a rampant desire to accumulate stuff. And we just went through the busiest shopping season of the year. Many of us have been bombarded by advertisements for the latest and best toys, for the best cars, for, for gadgets and all other stuff that the world tells us to, to treasure. Stuff that is supposed to make us happy. And while the endless pursuit of earthly possessions at the cost of our love for God and our neighbor is precisely what Jesus is warning us against. Because greed and wealth isn't going to make us happy. Collecting earthly treasures isn't going to give us lasting joy. Possessions and wealth, they quickly become an idol. Our attention can easily be pulled away from God and away from those around us and instead we end up falling in love with stuff. Or even if we're paying attention to those around us, sometimes it's only so we can compare what we own to what the Joneses down the street have. We desire more and more stuff, and we're never satisfied. Greed is, is this vicious cycle. It never has what it wants because it never has enough. And it seals joy by creating an endless state of, of discontentment and the constant search for that one next thing you don't have yet. And so greed, a greedy person is, is never happy because greed itself is never satisfied. And we can think of, of people who've been carried away by their love of, of wealth, by their love of stuff. And how often isn't it true that the love of stuff ruins marriages and tears apart families? And there's stories of, of people who had all the wealth in, in the world and yet they died alone and even hated. I remember one time seeing a, a bumper sticker on the back of a pickup truck and it said, whoever dies with the most toys wins. And there was another on the back of an RV that said, purchase with my children's inheritance. And what sad, what a sad way to live. 
you can't take your toys with you and if your your love of, of stuff is more important to you than leaving something behind for your children well that's a it's just a sad form of, of waste and greed but in many ways we can also fall into this this trap how many of us haven't fallen into credit card debt or some other form of debt because we wanted something we couldn't afford but we purchased it anyway I know I've certainly had times where I spent more than I should on things that I didn't really need and if you're like me those were times when our attention had been pulled away from God and and had been focused on just living in the moment we didn't find our joy in in whom we belong to but in what belonged to us and so our greed it, it causes us to make idols out of stuff and that's why Paul in Ephesians 5 tells us that one who is covetous or as the NIV says a greedy person is an idolater and yet there is hope for the greedy person there is a cure for greed and that hope is found in Christ and that cure is found in the working of his spirit Jesus reminded the crowds and he reminds us not to fall in love with stuff but to love our God with an undivided heart and to serve him to find our joy and our comfort in the one we belong to rather than the things that belong to us and so he calls us to build up our treasures in heaven and not here on earth and Jesus Christ he gave us the example to follow when he himself became poor in order to make us rich he said to one man that foxes have dens and birds have nests but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head and we know that Jesus was not a wealthy man and yet he was not led astray by greed or desires for for wealth and Satan offered him all the kingdoms of the world and yet Jesus refused him his love for his father and his love for you and me helped him overcome the temptation to build up treasures here on earth and that's now where we find ourselves Christ has died for us and poured out his spirit upon us so that we are able in some small way to begin obeying this commandment and it's an obedience that's motivated by the fact that Christ has saved us and he has paid for our sins and so now out of thankfulness we can follow him and as we follow Jesus and grow in our love for God we will be able to put to death our greed and love of stuff and there are some some practical ways that we can do this and I want to look at at three this afternoon first we can pray with the psalmist in Psalm 119 the the psalmist prayed incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways and psalmist prayed that he would not focus on on selfish gain in in hoarding the things of this earth and that he would not focus on worthless worthless things but on things that will last and primarily he he's praying for that he would focus on his relationship with God and we can pray that God would show us just how valuable our relationship with him is and that we would find our joy in him and not in our earthly possessions one time when I was driving to to Smithers BC a number of years ago there was a, a billboard along the highway and it asked why do Christians want all the world's toys and that has always stuck with me because we have something far more valuable far more joy producing than any of the toys that this world has to offer and when we recognize that then our greed and our love of stuff will fall away and we'll be like the man who found a treasure in a field and was willing to sell everything he had in order to buy that field we'll we'll be so filled with our, our joy in God that 
everything else will pale in comparison to knowing him. And then second, we can trust that God will keep his promises. He has promised to provide us with everything that we need. And he has provided you with everything that you need this far. And he'll keep doing that throughout your life. Christ came into this world to make us rich. Not rich with money, but rich with the treasures of heaven. He's obtained the greatest riches so that we could ever have. And he has saved our souls. And so we can rest assured that if he was willing to die for us and to save us, that he will also provide us with what we need from day to day. And so we can be content. We can be content with what we have and what we've been given. And third and, and finally, we can have a, a, a budget line for generosity. And one way to know that greed and love of stuff hasn't taken a hold of your life is if you're willing to give your money away. And so you can set some money aside each week or, or each month that you are going to use to make someone else happy or help a charity. And in this way you gain the motivation and the opportunity to give away your money and to help others rather than hoarding it. And because you've budgeted for this, the decision to give up the money is already made. And so when you find an opportunity to, to use it, there's nothing holding you back. Well, maybe all of this is somewhat daunting to you. Maybe you're stuck wondering if you'll ever be able to get rid of your love of stuff. Well, there is hope. Brothers and sisters, there was a man that was so consumed by greed that he ended up stealing. And he almost certainly made his living as a bandit and as a robber. And he was eventually caught and sentenced to death. But when he, while he was dying, he turned to Jesus, who was dying beside him. And he said, Lord, remember me when you enter your kingdom. And that man was forgiven of his sins and went to be with his Lord. And if his sins of greed can be forgiven, then yours can too, and mine can too. And so if you are weighed down because you recognize that you love earthly stuff too much, then take heart because Christ's grace is greater than our sins. And he can free you from chasing after earthly pleasures and greed. Let's pray. Father in heaven, help us to focus not on earthly things but on you. Help us to treasure the relationship that we have with you. And fill us with joy, Lord. Fill us with joy for what you have given us, above all else for what you have given us in Christ. Help us to use all the possessions that we've been given for your glory and to help our neighbor. We ask this all in Jesus' name alone. Amen.